Good morning from the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Kind of. On a nondescript street in the middle of Halifax, Nova Scotia. We are here and so is the cold, but what is not here is a winter storm. So we're gonna go explore the town. I've actually never been here. And I don't know much about it. And I've been working a lot, so I haven't had a lot of time to research. So we're gonna go explore this town together. Check this place out. It's super cool and I think we're gonna have to eat here because I'm hungry and it's cold outside and someone forgot their gloves. So first we're gonna have some coffee. Look at my view. I think to start the morning off, we need to start with some food. One of everything, please. Breakfast panini, looks like it's my jam. But check out all of this stuff. Look how pretty they are. Sparkles. Oh, that's cool. Okay, that was amazing. I think I may go there again tomorrow. So I've been in a bunch of like back-to-back -back meetings and stuff, and I've had to skip many meals, so I'm very hungry. But I'm back, you guys. And I'm gonna cross the street in this very busy intersection. No, I'm crossing the, oh. I've been encountered by a pile of snow. I want to show you these. These are really cute little windows here. I'll show you them when I come back on this street. So we are going to start our exploration journey on the sidewalk and looking at these very beautiful things in front of me. As you may or may not be aware, colorful buildings are super popular in the maritime region, which is where we're at. And I like that we have them here. Why are the buildings so short? Well, why not? It takes a lot to heat a building and they're cute when they're short. Just look at them. Neighborhood witch, let's go see. This is fun. I see, I see, I see. General store. General little witchy store is moving. There's a non binary beauty shop, and I'm gonna slip on the ice on the floor. There's a nice little clothing shop. I like their sign here. Shut! Moroccan cuisine? Is it tagine? I may have to come here. Okay. Okay, Halifax. You are making me get out of my comfort zone and wanting to go eat in these restaurants. This is cool. Photo time. Now don't be fooled with the bright skies. It's about negative 13, negative 14 Celsius is here. But look how cute this is. It's so bright and colorful. I'm in. I'm in, you guys. As you can see here, we are between winter storms. This is a prior winter storm. The other storm currently that's coming here is up north in, no or, uh, up north in Newfoundland right now. So we won't be going up there because no one's going up there. Not even the airplanes. Which is why we're down here because there's walking and pavement. And this is the government square. We see the library over here. It was built in 1945. 
I'm not sure what people did before that. I hope they read. And then over here is a little old university building. So as you may guess, Halifax was one of the first areas that settlements of Europeans came and hung out in. The challenge though was that European winters are really mild. And here, I mean, does this look mild? Just imagine someone from Steamfield, London with smoggy streets and dirty stuff entering this. Pretty certain they wouldn't be so successful in navigating or in understanding how to live here. So where we are headed right now is first to try to not fall over, but we're headed all the way up there. I haven't actually figured out how to walk there. Um, so we're just gonna pretend to be a car and try not to slip on the ice, ice baby. Ice, ice baby. Dun 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 ch, dun 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 ch. Look at this wall of snow. I can only imagine how cool it must have been when it was being plowed away. You can see the snow plow marks still here in the snow. Okay, we found an area before it eludes me. You guys, the whole idea was to go to the oldest part of the city first, this fort at the very top of the hill. Now, if you're building a strategic fort, you want to make it inaccessible. And it's even inaccessible to me. But I do see cars driving up there. So I know that at some point I will pretend to be a car and go up there. There's a bunch of parking though around here. So I know I'm kind of in the right spot. So I will see you next when we get up on the very cool old fort. I finally found the entrance. The port is Alberto. Finally. So I walked entirely all the way around this. Oopsie. Maybe someone should have looked at the map. So we're going up this hill. We're still walking on the road because the pavement sidewalk thingy is a little bit. I see, I see, baby. Okay, that's gonna get old. But hey, I'm the one out here in 20 degree weather who forgot her gloves and scarf, so I'm gonna go with it. Here is what is in front of us. Now we'll go see the harbor a little bit later today. Um, but one thing I find really interesting about Halifax is that the Halifax Harbor is the most, most the biggest, whoa, English, is the biggest harbor in the world that connects directly to an ocean that doesn't ice over. So there's some pretty cool weather patterns that go on up here. Right now, it's creating a very windy, coldy and dry climate, even though there's snow. It's pretty dry right now. So let me continue climbing this hill and show you at the top. So whenever, whoa, that's loud. So whenever the British were building this in the early 1800s, you can kind of see that it used to be a hill and then it comes flat at the top. So the hill was actually chopped off at the top and all of the stuff at the top was placed down there. So the bottom actually acts like a super good amphitheater and projects sound really well. But the thought was that if any land-based army is gonna attack Halifax, it was gonna be from that direction. Why that direction? Well, because that's kind of where more of the land-based stuff is. And on the other side of the hill where we're at, dunk, over there, uh, that's the sea. And so obviously you're not gonna be able, like, you'll see what's coming in the sea. So that's why this is built over here. So yeah, let's go. Let's go explore more. Look, look, we see an old Canadian fort. I hope this is the Abierto Puerta, because we're going in. OK, 
Cannonball! Cannonball! Very cool. So the Citadel was, as I mentioned, built by the British. Now, when the British were here, they were trying to claim the land for themselves, and Halifax was the main point of strategic war stuff, strategic war things. Well, the French wanted this place, and the Americans wanted this place, and the Germans wanted this place. So the fort that we're about to enter here is really a classic in Canadian history on how it withstood for hundreds of years with two world wars and helped to establish a continuity of Canada. So thanks the British. Let's go in and explore. We're entering the fort. Because the fort is all weird though. Look at this. No one's here. This is awesome, you guys. Let's see if the porch is up here, though, and get some information. Information. No. Puerto Cerrado. Okay, let's go explore. Now the thing about this fort that you probably can't hear is that it's really quiet. So if an army were trying to sneak up and attack, you could totally hear what they're coming in, or like the noise of some horses or heavy machinery. It also is nice to kind of kill the wind because the hill is flat. So every day at noon, in front of us, bloop, one of these cannons will fire just to remember what happened here. Now what I find interesting about this is that the cannon here fires at noon and in Edinburgh the cannon fires at one o'clock. What's the significance? I have no idea. But I just find it cool, it's very similar. So right in front of us we see the old explosion site which doesn't look like an explosion site. It just looks like the other side of the fort, right? So we see the old explosion site of the biggest man-made explosion prior to the first atomic bomb. See, in World War I, atomic science and nuclear science was still being discovered. So everyone was trying to figure out what to do. And yeah, all of the testing and stuff happened here, right at the fort. And as I mentioned in the distance, this is the Atlantic Ocean over here. Over here in the distance, you see a nice little suspension bridge. And because there's a variety of different, I guess islands or connected peninsulas or some geological, graphical situation here, there's a lot of bridges that connect stuff together. Now, we're obviously not going here in high tourist season. High tourist season is here starts around May because as you can see snow so if you're planning on coming here and want to do a bunch of the tourist activities plan on coming around May if you are just super into chill and local vibes come around January or February or March now one thing that the internet does not tell you that locals obviously know and I will tell you because Hala. Um, if you come here in the winter, there's random winter storms that come in into the Maritimes. Now, I'll do a whole podcast about Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, when I got stuck there, because it's an epic story. Um, but, oh, I'm going to fall on this ice. So in the winter, when a winter storm comes in, meteorologists kind of know how much snow is going to come but not really, and sometimes more snow comes than is planned. So when more snow comes than is planned, all of the flights get shut down, airport shuts, the streets shut, because there's not the infrastructure that there are in bigger cities like Montreal and Toronto and other cities to clear the snow out. So 
everything just shuts down, including the airports. So if you come here in the winter and you're like, oh, it'll be a quick little weekend trip. Uh, not always. You may be here for weeks or months on end, depending on the different storms that are coming in. So just plan accordingly if that happens. Now we're walking down this very icy road because this is one of the old clock towers. Now, if you are a Halifax local, please leave me a comment or if you know it, and if you're not a local. Um, I tried to do some internet research on what this is and why it's important, and I couldn't figure that out. But it's an old clock and you can't get in the building, says the internet. So this is an old clock. Enjoy. So we're going to a new destination by the sea. But getting there, I drove down this street last night and this is for all of my European viewers. This looks so North American. I don't know why, it just does. So enjoy some uh, very typical North American uh, streets. I'd say it's more on the Canadian side of things. A, because we're in Canada and B, because it's clean. So we see Alexandra's Pizza here. This would be a super cute spot in the summer to put your beer there and drink it. Ahead of us, there's this thing called Rogers Square. And first, we're gonna jump cut to Rogers Square. Okay, we're at Rogers Square. Is it just me? Or does this look like a giant phallic image? Only in Canada. Anyway, let's go explore Rogers Square and avoid getting hit by this car. So the reason we're going up here is because last night when I was driving to my hotel, I saw all of these TVs. Now, I mentioned it's negative infinity here. My camera keeps freezing and I keep having to warm it up. So I'm very amused with how these TVs are still running and not freezing. So it's a little bit loud because there's a bunch of generators, but this is likely where a bunch of events and stuff happen. There's restaurants. We can see all of the latest hockey news. Look how cool it is though. This is fun. So if you saw my Iceland video, you probably know that one of the things I liked most in Iceland was all of the graffiti. Look what we have here, you guys. We have so much beautiful street art. Look at this. I wonder how it's commissioned. I really like this one. So one of the reasons I like this piece is that it's done on two different levels. The colors are beautiful and they, like, they're really good in the light. The, all of the pieces are great, but um, you can see on this side, there's like a little uh, pub. There's sometimes food trucks that come in here and set up. There's either like a little stage for shows or just to stay warm. And even more street art, yay. You may also have noticed some similarities to the building structure here as in Iceland. Hala. I find it very cute and pretty. I like a city that will use color because why just have gray buildings? Whatever, you can have red and purple and green and pink. Just look at this. I'm in. This one's very pretty up here as well. A little doggy and a little lady. So as we're moving further away from city center, I have more facts to tell you. 
Halifax, very similar to Toronto, is now a combination of four different districts. I don't know why cities do this. I guess if you were into like political science or city planning or something, you'd figure that out. But back in the 1970s, there was four districts, municipalities that decided to come together and be called the Halifax Regional System. I think that's what it is, HRS. Um, HMS maybe, Halifax Municipality Structure. So most of the people live in city center. Halifax is about half a million people. Um, and as you move out from the city center in a very circular pattern, that's where like fewer and fewer people live. Lots of it is just because all the stuff is in the city center and you don't have to drive as much. So we're kind of going out a little bit further, um, mostly because on the Google, it says there's a little market. The Google lies quite often. So we're gonna see if the Google is telling the truth today or not. This structure is pretty cool. Now my camera's freezing trying to autofocus, but we're by the port. And even though it's not shipping containers, it's architected in the way that it would look like if you stacked a bunch of shipping containers on each other. So that's cool. So I'm almost, I think, to the farmer's market. And if not, then I'm going in this very cool part of town. All of the buildings have changed, as you can see. And there's not as many bars. There's housing structures. And I guess more of the food that you would expect to eat on a regular basis instead of bar food. Oh, almost to the bar caves. Pile of snow. And look what's in front of us. A tunnel. Let's go in the tunnel. The port is all here though. So this tunnel goes under the railroad tracks. Via Canada is a massive railroad system that connects the East Coast to the West Coast. And we're very near the uh, station for the train station in Halifax. So above us right now, um, there's a bunch of commuter trains, there's transportation trains, transporting things coming from the port. And then maybe in a little bit, we'll see a farmer's market. Let's enjoy the tunnel. Well, this is cool coming out of the tunnel. Look at all these structures. If I knew more about ships, I'd tell you what they are. But I don't. I'm starting to see people. So I know that I've almost reached the market, I hope. Or else I'm just reaching people who are coming equipped with food and warm beverages. Let's see. Oh, I'm in a running people's way. Healthy people. Healthy Canada, the ship structure, you guys. It's very cool. I recommend having one if you're gonna decorate a port. Halifax Seaport. So we are here right now at Halifax Farmers Market. Also along the seaport are so many other activities. We can go to Pavilion 22. 21 is where the Canadian Museum of Immigration is, which we'll try to get into. Some art galleries, some media centers, some schools, some brewing companies. So that's what's there. Let's go see what's in here. The Porta Sabierto. Messages. 
There's all sorts of food here. Some mead, some nuts, some greens. It's very warm, people. Machine. Pro tip, if you come to this very cool and warm and lively farmer's market, bring cash. Because, yeah. Or bring your debit card to get the cash out. Um, unlike Europe, cash is still in use here. Which is weird, but I guess that's my judgment after not living here for a while. Um, okay, now we're gonna go experience more of the pier. So behind us is the Canadian Immigration Museum. And why is this important? Well, as you know, Canada is a very young nation. And we kind of did mean things to people already living here. So we had to populate the country as a Western country. Now Canada is a country of immigrants. And it's been a refuge for many people, as we learned. From the Underground Railroad, we were a haven to people who were slaves. And then even as the years gone on, we were a haven to people like this little lady here, Ruth Goldblum. Now, in the early 1900s, Ruth came over here to Canada, to Halifax specifically, to escape Tsarist Russia. And she was like, hey, this place is super, super cool. I want to help other people. So here in Port 21, she set up an establishment where over a million immigrants have landed here. So we're gonna go inside here and learn a little bit more. Museum. Oh. So I mentioned Canada is built on immigration. From around 1200 to 1800, you can see here, it was all First Nations. And then in the 1800s, immigration started. And we can see that over the years, there's about 200,000 people every year immigrating into Canada. Halifax specifically has grown like, I think 10 or 20% in the last five years. So even this area is growing, which I find pretty cool. Since a lot of the places in Europe that we visited are depopulating, a lot of Canada is still currently populating. So it's a very young nation, and it's really cool to see just the, the dichotomy, diversity, the differences between nations that have been around for thousands of years, like there are in Europe, and a nation like Canada that's much younger, that's still learning, that's still growing, and that's still populating. exhibit here. It just really shows and brings home the life of an immigrant and all of the things that go into your mind when you're moving or immigrating into a different country. Like what do you bring? What do you leave behind? What are the necessities? How do you make friends? How do you deal with the different language? How do you deal with the different culture? And one thing I like on this wall is like how do you deal with the different culture? There's some very cool words here. I would like this one a lot. Laugh in an accent. And also, remember we being strange, yeah. You know, being an immigrant is all about different culture. This one's fun too. Change for you. One benefit about being an immigrant is that all of your decisions are for you. It's not for your home country. It's just your life and you're living at once. So let's continue to go explore this very cool museum. So whenever you become a Canadian citizen, you have to swear in to the Canadian Oath of Citizenship. And this is the Canadian Oath of Citizenship. 
I swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles III, King of Canada, and his heirs and successors, and that I will faithfully observe the laws of Canada, including the Constitution, which recognizes and affirms the Aboriginal and treaty rights of First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people, and fulfill my duties as a Canadian citizen. And then, your duties as a Canadian citizen, you learn all of those in this booklet that they give you, and you have to pass the citizenship test. So you need to get a 75% thingy to pass the citizenship test, and it is like this. So this is exactly how that a citizenship test looks also, if you were wondering. So, which answer contains three responsibilities of citizenship, which we learned you have to swear in the Canadian oath what those things are. I'm not certain. I do think this question appears in every test. So being loyal to Canada, giving charities and serving in the Naval Army or Air Force, obeying the law, taking responsibility for oneself and one family and serving on a jury, learning both official languages, voting in elections, caring for the environment, or obeying the law, owning your own business, and serving on a jury. Obviously, it's answer B. So, all of these things, who scored the goal heard around the world? Very important thing to know about the Canadian Soviet Summer Series. So in the 1970s, when the Cold War was at peak, Canada was like, you know what? War sucks. Let's go play hockey with the Soviets. And they did, and it was awesome. And so awesome, and now appears in the Canadian Citizenship Test. So I'm gonna go and continue my test to see if I can still pass. This is the entire building that we're in. And like I mentioned on the outside, it was built to uh, be the gateway for whenever immigrants came in here. So you can imagine all sorts of people in here, all sorts of like loud energy, crying people, excited people, happy people, sad people. This is the first place that they would have stopped whenever they were here. Of course you need some sort of medical attention for some of the people. You can dress up in old clothes if you would like to. There was a bunch of volunteers who helped people land. Like after you landed in Halifax, you had a couple of decisions. One, you could stay here. You could go out to other parts of Canada. And now there were some parts of uh, Canada that were harder to get to, like the West Coast. So after a while, in the early 1900s, mid 1800s, Canada started to give people like over 100 acres of land free if they wanted to settle in the West. So a lot of people did that and they would be boarded onto a train like this to then go out West to their new homestead, which I think would be a pretty massive culture shock after landing in a country where you see all sorts of crowds and people and energy just to going out to a very, not very settled West Coast. This is a very cool museum, you guys. But you see an old telegraph thing here? Let's go. And this old wheel. You can make it stamp. Come on. Focus. I'm not wanting to focus. There we go. Stamp. Stamp your ticket. Come over here and buy bread. And the purpose of this exhibit right here is to remind people who haven't immigrated how different the brands are whenever you land into a new place. Having moved to multiple different countries myself, yeah, it always, always hits you because you have to read the ingredients, you have to read the labels. Sometimes the ingredients are called something different. So it's, it's just a very stressful and new and exciting experience. So I'm really glad that they took the time to, to share that. Look at this. Now this looks like that market in Belfast. 
Okay, so when you would get off of the ship that you came here from the port, what would happen is that you deboard the ship like 600 people at a time, because that's all this room would hold. And you take your luggage and then put them in a certain area so they could be inspected to make sure that you weren't bringing any weird stuff in. Then you would walk through these doors here and come into this area. And there was like a place to clean up and to shower and to just like freshen up. And then you would wait here in some of these chairs. And this was a much larger area. This has just been done for the exhibit. But you would wait in an area like this and then be called up to the very front to be interrogated and just questioned by Canadian Border Service. And the questionings, they wanted to make sure that you weren't a baddie, that you weren't importing anything in that you shouldn't bring in. Like, probably needs and explosives and, you know, stuff to harm a body. Um, and to make sure that you had all of your paperwork in there so that Canada knew who you were. Um, here we can see a pretty cool image of what it looked like. All of these people who had just freshly taken a shower and cleaned up. There was an area also for the kids to play. Um, as I mentioned before, there was a little hospital if you needed some medical attention while you were waiting. But then you would just hang out here and then wait until someone who spoke your language called you up, get your paper stamped. Welcome to Canada. So I've realized that I'm really hungry. And as you can tell, we're back outside. Speedy walk. Tell me you're in the Maritimes without telling me you're in the Maritimes. Lobster. This is a very cute little shopping and dining. Oh, and a cute little car. Must be inclusive of all of the things. Okay, we could eat here. Possibility. Urbanish women's clothing. Doesn't sound like a place where I could eat. So, every country has its staple beer. You know, Ireland has Guinness, Scotland has Brewdog, England has Brewdog. Canada, one of our staples is Alexander Keats. And in front of us sits the Alexander Keith's Brewery. So, we're gonna go see what's inside there. Because I find it crazy that a tiny little country, tiny little place like Halifax supplies the entire country of Canada with beer. So, let's cross this road, uh, not the crosswalk, because that's smart. And walk into this area. Let's see what's inside. We're hoping for some food. Oh, brewery chores. Doesn't sound like brewery food. I got in. We're going on another brewery tour. As if we didn't know how brew, how beer, how beer was made and English was spoken. But what makes this one entirely different is that it's in Canada. Yay beer. Because it's a super secret process, I can't take video. So I'm gonna go drink my beer and learn and put in a photo montage. Enjoy. gotten out of the tour of Mr. Alexander Keith. Now, let's rank the tour. It was great. So it's nothing like any of the European brewery tours I've been on. Very Canadian, and if you're here, I'd say you have to go see it. It's, I think, $35 a person. But with that $35, you also get four, three or four samples 
of the different beers that are brewed here. Some of them actually only out of Halifax, so totally worth it. Um, you also get a live music show, so that's super cool. And then it's just entirely different. So you hear about Mr. Alexander Keith. Now, Mr. Alexander Keith actually came from Scotland in the year 1817. And in Scotland, he did a lot of touring around and trying to figure out how to brew the best beer. And he learned that because he moved to England, learned some stuff, moved to Scotland, learned some stuff. And then he learned up and down the, the British Isles on what to do. So that's cool. Then he came to Canada and he started to brew beer here and he was actually really good at it. And over his lifetime, he was kind of like the persistent mayor and president and governing body of Nova Scotia. So he came here, as I mentioned, in like 1817, I think. And he was the Scottish dude who brought beer to Canada. Now, if you're not from, <laughs> car is right there. If you're not from Canada, one thing you should know is that Mr. Alexander Keith's yeah. beer can be, oh, it's sunny now, can be drinking in most available pubs. So it's the staple. In Europe, we have like Peroni on top or San Miguel, um, sometime Bier Moretti. Here in Canada, it's usually Keith's is just like the staple on tap anywhere in the country you go. So that's fun. So yeah, it was very cool to learn. Oh, no, I can see again. Very cool to learn about another immigrant. Canada, his story, what he brought to Canada and the legacy that he left. Now, um, I need a new destination because the sun sets here very late. It's crazy to see actually when you're living in the 60th parallel how much earlier the sun sets. Back home, or wherever home is, it would almost be dark by now, but here, look how bright it is. Cold, snowy, but bright. So one thing we've not discussed yet that we should probably discuss. You may have seen in a bunch of photos, or oh, probably fix the mic. Okay, no, I'm not muffled. You may have seen in a bunch of photos and videos that you've seen so far from me, um, the Nova Scotia flag. Yeah, we also just got out of Scotland. Does that look like the Scottish flag? If you say yes, you're right. Nova Scotia, in Latin, guess what it means? New Scotland. So, as you know, Canada was settled by a bunch of people from Europe, and that's what they decided to call this place. Now, the only comparison that I feel like it has to Scotland is the friendliness of the people. Like, that's it. The rest of it is Iceland. So, enjoy Nova Scotia. Canadian chairs that the rest of the world has realized why they're so comfortable. Swedes may have invented Teague, but we got chairs, world. So it's time for another very useful Halifax fact. Halifax. Halifax. So I mentioned Halifax is the capital of everything nautical in America. Well, check out this. Even the playgrounds are organized as nautical things. In front of us, we have a giant octopus and a submarine and mini octopuses and mini whales. That's pretty cool. Now, being the nautical capital of this area, possibly for the Maritimes, but maybe for all of Canada, um, one thing that I will comment about is that whenever the Titanic sink, the ships, like the rescue ships, a bunch of them came out from Halifax 
to go rescue people or rescue people that weren't living anymore. So, out of all of the ships that went out there, they found, I think, like 400 different bodies. Um, there was, I believe, 150 of these bodies that they found that weren't claimed by anybody. So while those people are people and while they have a purpose, what Halifax did was bury them in a, they're all in a graveyard. They're about six kilometers from where we're at. And I'll try to go there, but if I don't, I'll post a photo. The thing that I think is really cool about this though, is that Canada's home for everybody, even if no one claims you. So yeah, pretty cool place you guys. Now we're walking down a very touristy little pier. The thing that's challenging about this little pier is that there's no place for me to put my camera. How am I supposed to get an epic selfie shot? All right, we'll figure it out. You guys take a look at this. So I'm just walking down the boardwalk and then in front of me, I see this super old wall in front of the snow, let's see if the light will adjust. But there's this massive mural on it. And it's really pretty. And if there was less snow, you'd see how cool of a mural it is. But it looks like a cityscape of the entire Halifax area here. Really cool. That's fun. So one thing I can say I really like about Halifax is that it's, it's so small that you can take washroom breaks in your hotel room. Someone may have locked their hotel cards, multiple cards in my room today. So every time I go in, I'm like, ah, I've locked my room key in my room again. And they're just like, dude, okay. Remember to put it in your jacket after you swipe in. Yeah. I haven't gotten to that elite status yet. Anyway, I'm also very excited because we are finally going to go eat lunch. Yay! Now it's late-ish, I guess for lunch, but I'm hungry and I really wanted to go to this place. So I hope it's really good. And if it's not good, it's gonna taste great because I'm hungry. So let's go walk down this cute little street and see if the lunch place is open. So many portas, you guys. I'm already into this place. So I've entered my taco place. Behind me is a fire of fuego. Behind me is a fuego. And a hot sauce. Caliente. Right now I have some water. So I've ordered a bunch of food because I haven't eaten in a couple of days. See, work was really busy. And when I have to socialize at work, and going back to back meetings in real life. There's no time to like run into the kitchen and grab a something to eat before the next thing pops. So I may be hungry and we're going to experience the food of Halifax. I'll show you when I get here. So round one has come. We have some salsas. We have a drink. We have some chips. And what they call Asquitas. I've never heard of it before, so we're gonna try it. Apparently it's just corn and cheese. I'm in. Any type of corn, cheese, I'm in. Cheers. Okay, good North American staple margarita. Good lime, good lime. 
This is the best. I don't have to share my salsa with anybody. Just me. Ow. I didn't realize how crunchy chips were. Hopefully that doesn't clip the mic. All right. Green salsa. Green salsa taste test. That one's pretty good. Although, it could be better if they roasted the tomatillo first. And now let's try the other one. Other light red salsa. When I put the chip in my back of my throat, that was a bad idea. Okay. Decent. Although I like the roasted salsas better because the other ones just taste like ketchup. Okay, now let's try this. I already forgot what it was called. Escondido! We're going with it. So it's corn, it's cheese. Um, it looks like pimento. I'm still trying to figure out if I like this. So it's warm. Mm. It's something like I've never tasted before. So I'll taste it again. You know what it tastes like? It tastes like salmon from Tesco. If you were to cook salmon from Tesco in Irish butter, Irish salted butter, and then put a can of green giant not salted corn in that same pan, warm it up, um, and then put some either five or ten percent Greek yogurt and just like mix it in there. Whatever this is, I'll show you again. That's what it tastes like. Yep, focus. That's what it tastes like. Okay, so I'm gonna go enjoy this, and I'll show you when the tacos come. Okay, check it out. Thing the fish. Carnitas. Let's see how it is. Okay, so I finished up here. I'm very tired. But because I've been waking up for like the past week, super hungry, I think I'm gonna go find a grocery store. Because last night I had this dream and I was like driving, I was tired driving, so I was like swerving and I was in a tunnel and the autocorrect in the drive kept pulling me back on the road and I would like not to have another driving dream. And I was driving to go to the grocery store because I was so hungry. Maybe it's my subconscious way of saying I should go to the grocery store before I go to bed. So in case I get really, really jet like hungry, I can have some food. If you're a dream analyst, analyze that dream for me, please. But hey, I got to the grocery store safe in my dream. Although I knew when I was driving in my dream, I shouldn't be driving in my dream. Anyway, we're going to go to the grocery store. So I was looking for a grocery store all day. Turns out it was three blocks from my hotel. Shows you that I am using the wrong terms in Google to hunt for a grocery store. Anyway, we're gonna go in to this grocery store. It's not normally what I go into, but it's super fancy. So, this should be good for the vlog. Let's go see fancy grocery store. Green lettuce. So, reminder to you, eat your green lettuce. Last night, if you cannot tell, I spent with a bunch of food poisoning. Now the food here is great, it's just probably my stomach that is not as amazing as the chef's here. So I have just packed up my room, which you can see, and we're going to start heading off for a new adventure. I've got 43 minutes left on this data card, so it will be a quick adventure today. And then I've got an airplane to catch, and then a bunch of sleep, and... I guess hydration to get back into me. Food poisoning is never fun, and I seem to get it quite a lot. So I will see you when I get to the first adventure. Hi. So one thing I find super challenging, traveling in Canada. People hear my accent, and they think that I am from here, and I'm asking dumb questions. The most common question I ask is, where do I pay for the bus? 
see in Europe, everything is by card. <laughs> Here, there's still a cash system. So I asked my hotel concierge how to pay for the bus. And she asked me, why don't you drive? <sighs> and of course, no one d takes the bus unless you need to take the bus. So we'll see how to do this. This is the bus station. And that didn't work out quite well. I didn't have a very friendly encounter with the bus driver or the people around me. So I decided to literally cool off from that experience in this very cold and beautiful park. And then just decided to go explore a different part of Halifax instead. So I went to the drugstore because sometimes they sell things and I was asking them for bus tickets and it turns out they do sell them but only in packs of 10. So I guess it it works if you live here uh, but if you're a tourist and just trying to get around town I don't know how that really scales because I just need one ticket anyway we're gonna go take a look at some shops and oh cribbage you guys I need to find some room to eat a cribbage we're gonna go take a look in here see what's up and make the best of it. This is pretty. This is the the Halifax in the summer. Now, because the boardwalk yesterday was so beautiful, I decided to go again today and take a look at it. And then I found these really cute runners. So I started running quickly after them because I was like, hey, let's run with a heavy backpack and get some workout in. And then I ran it across this water and the water was so beautiful. You can't tell from the photo and I've turned down the sound, but it, the wind, it was so intense which is why you're seeing everything now on the GoPro and why I'm not narrating it in person. It was near impossible to even get any sound on my mic. So yeah, crazy windy day, but I definitely took advantage of it. Is that right? Shouldn't it be Authentico España? Mexicana, is it Espanol, the language? Can someone um, who speaks better Spanish than me comment on that? Because if I found a, a word mistake, I'm pretty sure that makes me a polyglot. Okay, so we're just gonna continue on this little sea walk. No one is here walking today because it's really cold and the wind is letting you know it's there. That said, it's also very beautiful. So I'm sucking it up. And if I see a pub that's open, we are going to embrace my Canadian, Scottish, English, Spanish, Swedish, wherever the hell I'm from life and warm up. Nothing beats walking by the sea and just feeling how intense the wind is. I mean, look at this little Canada sign. If there was a better place to put my camera, I would have taken a photo. And this sign here is a tribute to all the Portuguese sailors who came into Canada and who landed here. So they came into this place because look, you guys, I found Johnny Walker, you keep walking. Same, same. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed our very cold and windy walk in the Halifax this weekend. I'm going to have one of the beers that we saw yesterday. Cheers! 
and then figure out how to get to the airport. Because as we've learned, I can't figure out how to navigate the bus system here. Um, yeah, like, subscribe, tell me where I should go next this year. I have some stuff planned for the spring, but the spring is only like a week away. So I need some ideas. So leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching. Ciao. Thanks for watching my video of Halifax, Nova Scotia today. As we walk the plank, let's see where we end up next week. If you haven't, enjoy the sun. Fresh sun is really nice. Ciao.